out there and welcome to another edition of your favorite show, The Diaspora. And I'm your host, Koinsola Adetumbi. The World Boxing Arena is agog and Nigeria is dominating. Last time it was Anthony Joshua, a British Nigerian, who was declared the World Heavyweight Boxing Champion. And now we have Kamaru Din Usman, popularly called Kamaru, an American Nigerian who defeated his opponents, Kobe Covington, in the waterway division of the UFC 254. What a feat. Enjoy the highlights. Good body kick by Covington. Good right hand by Usman. Great Nigerians out there making us proud. In fact, it is a season of medals and honorees. Another Nigerian, again a British Nigerian, cut at home the third highest honor on member of the British Empire by the Queen of England. This was bestowed on Princess Ola Shubomi Igila Aino. She came calling at the Chairman CEO Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Honorable Abike Dabiri Erewa. Watch this. After 15 years or more was when I discovered that it was a divine call, that it wasn't that I just desired to participate politically. When a UN ambassador wanted a reference from me and they had to contact um, Professor Rogers Makojola to say that we actually need a reference from you about this lady. So a white lady contacted um, Professor Rogers Makojola and the lady had to call me back to say, what are you doing in the UK? So I was like, what, what, what's the question all about? And then she said that, Nigeria needs you. So I was like, what happened? She said, I just spoke to your VC, and everything he said about you, that she was really astonished that these are the kind of people that should be in Nigeria. I'm not trying to self-praise myself, but I'm just doing like a reported speech. I cried that day because I know that if there is anywhere I want to be in my life at any time, is Nigeria. Anytime I'm leaving this country, when I come visiting, I'm always crying because I don't want to leave Nigeria. I am just tied to this nation and I believe that there is a purpose for everything. Um, Professor Rogers Makonviola happens to be someone that I fought throughout my administration on the basis of good welfare. He tried his best, but I would always advocate for the student. Now, you know, we always want more, just like Oliver Twist. So I did a lot of this, and I was shocked to hear that he had good reference for me. He had good, good story to tell about me. And he pointed the, 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 the white lady to a book that he wrote, that is, um, Water Must Flow Up Ill. He said he wrote this book after he, uh, his um, tenure at Ife, and he had to emphasize my role in page 187 and page 188 of Water Must Flow Up Ill to say how much I had made impact in Ife, and surprisingly to me, he said in the book that I was the one that God used to reinstate Anthony Fashayo and others who were rusticated students at the time. This was an inherited problem that we had at Ife. Before I became a student, several students had died while they were rioting and rallying to reinstate Anthony Fashayo and others. So my tenure inherited that problem, and I got there and some of, I, I, I wasn't a member of any party, I was an independent candidate, but I just felt that I could offer something. So other leaders who were from parties would look at me and say, you're just like a girl's guide president. But I did not look at that. But that girl's guide president was the one God used to solve the problem of many years that had taken lives and made some students um, lose their limbs or, um, and become disabled. What am I trying to say? The journey had started since. In 2005, Niger Republic had the problem and, the, and they had a dying population where a lot of their population was dying of drought. To the glory of God, I had a father who was wealthy and left us with a lot of assets. So I personally sold my asset, which I inherited from my father. In fact, at the time, I was wondering, that, do I really know what I was doing? But this is just where my heart is. And then when, in fact, when I, I remember getting to the, um, to the stock, uh, stock broker 
And he said to me, he started querying and asking me questions because he wanted to be sure that it wasn't four or nine people that met me on the way and wanted me to come and sell what I had. So I, 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 had, to, I had to call his attention to what was happening in Nijay, that people are dying there and I've got shears. So what, what's the essence of the shears if I can use it to save lives? So when he heard that, he went ahead to sell my shares and then I had to take volunteers from Nigeria to Nigeria Republic to rescue lives. And we did that in Gari Issa, Gari Idi, Gari Megimi, some of the communities, about five communities were fed to the glory of God through the food bank project that Light Up started at the time. The National Women Peace Group happens to be a project that was inaugurated by President Obasanjo. I was mistakenly selected by Chidu Bem, one of the ALF staff, who said that this lady, because she had served at the capacity of the president of Obafemi University, would be able to um, help in regard in this regard. So there was a lot of controversy about my selection because a lot of the people, in fact, everybody felt I was too young, except Chidu Bem, who believed in me. And as I was given the opportunity to go back to Lagos State and help the women and young people of Lagos State in the area of peace building in Lagos State, and that was the time that there was Aousa and the Yoruba people's crisis. To the glory of God, I was the most active national women peace group focal person amongst all the 37 that were selected for Nigeria. And I give God the glory for that. Friday Multipurpose Center started in 2010. Again, to the glory of God, after that project, Croydon Council was looking for 15 young people to represent the whole borough of Croydon. I must tell you that five out of the 15 that were selected for the whole borough were from Light Up Foundation, and I worked directly with these young people. I mentored them, I, I, I trained them, and I counseled them throughout. So it's a big honor that five of these young people were actually like a third of the population that were, of young people representing Croydon happens to come from Light Up Foundation, an organization that God gave me the grace to start. Youth Heritage Project. There was London crisis, there was problem and fire in London, I don't know if you heard about that, where young people had to start burning their own assets. So at that point, after the, the event of the fire everywhere, I had an inspiration and I went into the street with some of the Light Up team. We started asking this question, why didn't you burn your own house? Why did you take to the street to burn the beautiful buildings that we have in London? And the young people said, our house, with a lot of, they were astonished. And they were, why would, why, why would we, they were asking us back, why would we burn our house? So that question revealed to us that they had accepted their own home as theirs, but they are yet to accept their communities as theirs. So because of that, we decided to go on a project that would make them realize what they have, what they do not know, educate them on their assets so that they are able to defend it in the, in the future rather than destroy it. So the Youth, um, the youth Heritage Project, we had it in Croydon and Haringey which were one of the two ma major boroughs that had uh, uh, most of their buildings burnt down. So this project had I, um, youth heritage ambassadors from Croydon discover a lot about Croydon and the buildings and heritage buildings in Croydon. So what happened was that we had collaboration with the Royal Institute of British Architects and we had uh, collaborations with um, the, um, the Croydon Libraries and the Museum and also the Aringa Libraries and Museum. So they were able to show the children all around to tell them what they have got. And some of the buildings might be like 500 years. In fact, I went on a tour with them, and when I discovered a particular building that I just walk in front of every now and then without regarding it, ever since then up until today, when I walk in front of that building, I look at it again. That You mean this building is over 500 years? And this was the awareness we created in the hearts of the young people. They were all astonished. And they went back, they educated the old of Croydon, the all of Aringe, with the information that they were able to acquire on this project. They made, they, they made a magazine called the First Youth Heritage Magazine for Croydon and the First Youth Heritage Magazine for Aringe. And in it was a documentation of the heritage buildings and what everything, um, what you need to know about it. So after this project, this magazine was circulated in all the secondary schools in Croydon all the secondary schools in Aringe, all the primary school in Croydon, all the primary school in Aringe, all the libraries in Croydon, all the libraries in Haringe, and that made a lot of 
it, it was quite impactful. The young people went to, the Croydon young people went to Aringe to tell them that we have discovered ourselves now. Come and hear what we have in Croydon. And Aringe came to Croydon to say we also know a lot about ourselves now. Come and have what we have discovered about Aringe. So this exchange and all of that was very impactful and a lot of young people are now changed due to this project. We have been working in Nigeria even before I left Nigeria. You may be surprised to hear this, that I just went to London on visit when I discovered this man that was interested in me. And that was the reason why I became a resident of the UK, not, because, not willingly, because it's just by marriage. So even though while I was there, before I got married, we have had several projects in Nigeria. And up until today, we are still having loads of projects. There's a project called Let's Talk in Nigeria. What we do is, I go to secondary schools, I wear their uniform, and then I chat up with them. We have a motivational session, and then we have a counseling session one-on-one -on -one for young people who feel that they need to talk to someone. And during the one-on-one, -on -one, what we discover is that some young people are, de are beginning to develop psychological problems. A search forum would bring it to the attention of the authorities and we do what we can do to help at the counseling level. Another thing we do is we use that project to discover young people who have so much talent but yet they are, they are unable to achieve their talent due to lack of funds, school fees and all that. So we get, we got, we've, we've been rolling out scholarships to young people in schools in different states in Nigeria just to ensure that we support them. At some point we decided that okay, let's equip parents with skills and finance to be able to cater for their own children. So we started giving macro credits to parents just to enable them to be able to cater for their own family. So Let's Talk project has been running from 2010 and we are still having Let's Talk up until today. We work in the juvenile prisons in Nigeria. There are three juvenile prisons in Nigeria, one in Abeokuta, one in Kwara State and the other in Kaduna. We currently work in Kwara State and Abeokuta, most especially Abeokuta. We equip the young prisoners, we don't call them prisoners, but it's called a postal prison, um, a postal um, corrective facility unit. So what we do is we send in motivational speakers from now, every now and then to educate these young people and to encourage them. And while we started doing that, we discovered other needs. So we started sending professionals who will teach them, and in fact, they will make beautiful clothes for you. Who will teach them how to make clothing. And the clothes I was wearing in that, um, um, on the day that I was receiving my insignia from the prince, was actually designed by the professional in charge of the prison. So she, they've been training the, those young people on how to make beautiful clothing and how to make bags and all, all manner of things. We also have professionals in the area of IT equipping those young people on how they can repair computers and how they can also um, have basic skills. We have been doing this for years to the glory of God and we still are interested in doing more. We have worked in Quara because of our commitment to the prison. Currently as we speak, the prison uniform is a light top shirt in Abeokuta. They wear the light top shirt as their prison uniform. So when you want to visit them now, you would see them in light up shirts. So when they release them, most of them light up. Now, our, another project we took up is to reunite these young people with their individual families. Wow, we love you, ma'am. Such an inspirational work. Keep up the good work. synergy will be the decisive strategy for sustainable prosperity. The synergy, the diaspora synergy is going to be at the heart of that next Nigeria that we all dream about. But I'm also going to argue Nigeria and Africa currently runs the risk of losing the second and the other generations of his diaspora through what I label as a bleaching syndrome. The 22nd century, in our view, should be Africa's century. But if we, but only if we systematically create 
a new African consciousness on identity and their strategic program of unleashing the diaspora energy. In today's world, our view is that a prosperous homeland for a diaspora is not just a choice, it is a duty. The diaspora is not just some group of people somewhere we are pleading to, to come to Nigeria and do us a favor, quote unquote. My view is that the diaspora population constitutes the other Nigeria, and therefore the development of Nigeria is not a choice, it is a duty. For this to happen, organization is key. As the saying goes, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Organization, organization, organization. And now, let's go on a quick break. Ha! Not so fast. Look, I'm tired. I want to check out of this country for greener pastures. Just calm down for a moment. Please sit down. <sighs> Do you have a job where you're going to? Uh, no, but someone is arranging, you know. Listen, uh, listen, listen, Alinko. Checking out of this country without proper planning means one thing. Unimaginable begin. Eh? You know, I've been in the diaspora, but legitimately doing great things at home and abroad. As I've been saying, without the proper footing abroad, the risk is not worth it. Listen, Alinko, it's better to be home than be trapped abroad or even end up in prison. back. Nigerians are still accomplishing great feats. Congratulations to Mrs. Chinyelu Susan Onwura, who has been in the parliament for years and now became Newcastle's first black MP. And also Mrs. Kate Osamo, who was re-elected MP for the Edmonton Government Office in London, England. And lastly, Mrs. Kemi Badinok, who was also re-elected as a member of the United Kingdom Parliament. Our diaspora delight this week is Kennedy Ekezie, born in Imo State, Nigeria in 1999. Kennedy is a young activist who seeks to empower indigent individuals and groups through positive, emphatic social activism. He is the founder of Kalaba Youth Council for Women Rights, a non-governmental organization that creates awareness and advocates the rights of Nigerian women. Kennedy, in 2017, was selected as a global team leader and also recognized by Obama's Young African Leader Initiative. Kennedy was honored by Queen Elizabeth II as one of the young leaders in the world for raising $2 million worth of grants to start a mentorship program for young African leaders all over the world. Proudly Nigerian. You see what I'm telling you? Nigerians are making waves around the globe. And now, here's the Help From Home segment. On today's edition, we bring you 10 Nigerians who were trapped in Cairo, Egypt. But the good news is that six of them have been rescued and returned home. And the remaining four are being processed and will soon return home. We thank the Nigerian ambassador to Egypt, Professor Dandati Abdukader, the first secretary, the Nigerian embassy in Egypt, Mrs. Adewumi Oyewumi, and other officers of the Nigerian embassy in Cairo, and also the International Organization for Migration for facilitating their safe return. We are glad they are back home and we can all always offer a helping hand. 
thanks for being a part of the show. And meanwhile, you can reach us on all our social media platforms. On Facebook at Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. On Twitter at NITCOM underscore gov. On Instagram at NITCOM underscore gov. On our website at www.nitcom.gov.ng. You can also join us on DSTV at NTN Network News on Friday at 10.30 a.m. NTN International on Monday at 3 p.m. NTN News 24 on Friday at 2.30 p.m. and on Sunday at 11.30 a.m. I remain your host, Coinsola, at Day Tumbi. See you next time.